tonight I will share with you my my spiritual journey <laughs> and my experience. Huh? It all started in uh, March 1999 on the 6th, 6th of March when I attended the Novitiate program for the first time uh, in conjunction with the late Chief Reverend uh, Dr. K. Sri Damananda, 8th year birthday. During this short period of nine days, I discovered that uh, the life as a monk is very, very meaningful. So after that, I make aspiration to become a monk as soon as possible. I also refer to uh, Bhante Mahinda, uh, who asked me to practice out of the road first. So when, uh, when my uh, children has uh, more or less completed their education, then I took the plunge. Uh. So with the encouragement from my children, uh, and my wife has no objection, so I traveled to um, Myanmar. But before I went to Myanmar, Actually, I was considering a few options. Firstly, uh, was uh, Bhante Dharma Wudo. Bhante Dharma Wudo, because I, I know him since uh, I think 1995 or 1996 when he was staying at the Hilltop uh, at the Taman Tan Yulai. But uh, Unfortunately, he said that uh, I'm too old. <laughs> At that time, I was 56 years old. Already. He said I'm too old to, to be a monk. Because uh, too old, I say the character cannot change. Then I considered uh, Acham Brahm. But they told me that uh, Acham Brahm Center, you have to wait. There's a long waiting list. Uh, so finally, I choose uh, an outside door because in 2005, when I organized a 30-day meditation retreat for him, he invited me to be a monk at his monastery. So that time I was not ready. Yeah. So, uh, so now when I'm ready, I'll, I go to his monastery. But his main monastery is Moromien. I was told that it can be extremely hot. Uh, uh, Temperature can go up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And I went to check with uh, another monk. He said, yeah, sometimes it's very hot. We have to carry our bed into the bathroom and sleep. <laughs> and it's going to be very hot. Uh, so finally, I chose uh, Yangon. Because at that time, uh, Sayadaw U Aganya came down to, to Dengkila. There's a Dhamma Vijaya Meditation Center. <clears throat> He was a teacher there. So he said that can I can go to uh, Yangon to for my ordination. But he said I can't be ordained under him because he needs to travel. Um, because he has been holding retreat everywhere. So he referred me to his uh, another colleague, uh, Udamansara. So that's why I got ordained at uh, Yangon branch. Pao Toya. Uh, Toya means forest. Eh? Uh, Pao Toya, Yangon. So I initially I stayed there for seven months. But that place is very noisy because we are surrounded by six other temples, monastery and pagoda. And uh, it's very, very noisy. So, so after the in, initial period uh, of uh, seven months, I applied to go to Pinulin, place called Pinulin. Old name is Mimiu. Uh, because uh, Pao Saidong will be having a meditation retreat there. So uh, I got... A transfer there, 
and I was quite happy there uh, for 17 months I was there mm. until the, my teacher got transferred to Batam uh, because he, uh, we uh, the <coughs> Dayaka donated a monastery to us and my teacher said oh Damansara has to become the airport there so I went over to Batam to join him. So the choice of the monastery and the tradition is very important. <clears throat> because certain place, <clears throat> certain place, the emphasis is on meditation. Certain place is on Dhamma Sadi or Tutta, and certain place is only chanting. So ours is more on meditation. Uh, that's where my interest is. Uh. For Dharma study, I can study on my own. So um, this, this place is quite suitable for me. Of course, we, we, we also have to look into our living condition. <clears throat> Initially, the temple in, in Yangon uh, is not so suitable because the uh, Number one is the food. The food is too sweet for me <laughs> and too oily. Uh, and they don't have enough uh, fruits. Uh, so my intake of fiber is uh, practically new. Uh, mm -hmm. So for the first seven months, I suffered from constipation. But uh, the monks there eh, and the... Uh, <clears throat> Culture there is okay. Huh? So <clears throat> initially, when I don't have fruits, huh? so I have to use my own requisites to purchase. Of course, I get the kapya to buy for me huh? because we monks we are not allowed to leave the temple. Um, so finally, uh, they have a meeting with us uh, to. So far, I'm the only foreign monk there. There are a few uh, foreign Sayali. Uh, Sayali are the 10 preceptor in ropes, uh, so they are called Sayali. So um, I requested for some fruit, so they, from then on, they supply me with fruit. So coming to <clears throat> climate, uh, environment surrounding the monastery, like I say, in Yanguna, we are so we are surrounded by so many temples and monasteries, so making it very, very noisy. And imagine the loudspeaker turned on to the full volume. And the temperature there is also uh, a bit hot, but um, it's quite bearable. And the diet, I say, lack of uh, fiber, lack of fruits. The language is not a problem for us because uh, our teacher can speak English. So uh, getting instruction from them and uh, interview um, is no problem. Huh? So later after shifting to Pinulin, uh, the place there is very much better because the place is about 3,000 feet above sea level and it's quite cooling. Huh? Uh, in winter, can go go until nine degree Celsius. It's very nice, and because it is uh, near to China, very near to China. By car, I think it's about eight hours drive from China. So we have a lot of fruits from China, a lot of things from China also. Uh, so, and a lot of veggie from China. So that place is very suitable for uh, staying and the climate also nice. But uh, when it comes to summer, it can be very, very hot. So it's only a few months. Uh, we, and normally during the summer, afternoon we go to the meditation hall. So uh, we escape from the heat of uh, our kuti. <clears throat> then uh, the 
the kapya in uh, at pinolin is also very helpful uh, take care of all our things uh, including stopping up our handphone luckily i i met a businessman who dana me one one handphone uh, and the sim card uh, you'll be surprised the sim card at that time is 250 us ringgit dollar <laughs> very very expensive So, uh, like I say, this place in Pa'awa, we are only concentrating on meditation. One day we have about seven sessions of meditation. So, if you want to study Sutta, also can. Our, our main monastery, you can uh, attend the Pali class, you can attend Abhidhamma class, you can attend Sutta class, but that is not compulsory. Uh, <clears throat> The main focus is meditation. Then uh, after the my stay at Pinulin, my teacher, remember I say he was transferred to Batam. So I had to follow him to Batam. Uh, my, my third place huh, is Batam, where I stayed there for about one year. Huh? In fact, slightly longer, longer than one year. But the, <clears throat> the place is a bit uh, inconvenient because the Indonesian uh, immigration only allow a two month visa. After the two months, we have to extend, and uh, its extension costs about uh, Malaysia ringgit, one hundred ringgit. The two month visa is about 200 ringgit, so it's about 100 ringgit per month. Eh? So one year stay could be 1,002. So after one year, I ran short of funds. So uh, I asked to be um, back in Malaysia. Luckily in Malaysia, we have an, a few monastery. Eh? So I joined uh, another Bante, uh, Dham, Bante Dhamma Putta. Up at Sitawana. That place is quite cold because it's the same height as Penang Hill. Mm. So I was there for about one year or so. Then um, <clears throat> we, we just practice on our own. Uh, the Pante Dhamma and Puta will just uh, look out uh, at our behavior, our conduct. Then most of the time, the meditation is our own. So after one, one year, my kapya started to give problem, <laughs> human, human issue. Eh? Then I shift to, luckily I got a friend who has an estate in Bali Pulau. So he, he allowed me to build one kuti and I stayed there for about uh, four months. Uh, Then after that, in fact, I before I shift to my present kuti at uh, a place called Ayetam near Telakti Temple, huh? I, I was in uh, Bukit Matajam, another Pa'au monastery called Nandaka Vihara. Then our senior is uh, Bandi Dhamma Subo. So uh, I was there for quite some time. Huh? So after that, I completed my five wasa. When we completed our five, five wasa, we can uh, venture out on our own. So after the five years, I shift to a kuti uh, at the uh, Ayetam near Keroxi Temple. Okay. <clears throat> So Kelosi Temple, I'm staying all by myself. Then until recently, another another Bante who just come back from uh, Pinulin or so, so he come and join me. So for more than four years, I, I was on my own. At uh, my present kuti in Ayetam, uh, it is very convenient. 
because we are well supported. Um, our main attendants help me to to manage my fund. Then, uh, then I have part time kapia also. Full time kapia they handle my fund. Then the part time kapia will uh, help me to bring back the food from Pinda Park. The the food and the offerings we receive is uh, actually very very good. On weekends we have about two square tables of food and uh, weekday Monday to Thursday about one table so it's a lot of food so I will take whatever I need then the kapia will bring out the rest uh. then I have a kapia who also uh, drive me to other places because uh, on weekend uh, I need to go to other center to do some dharma propagation. So this kapia will help to drive me. So the the sponsor are very uh, generous. I have people who sponsor my electric bill, water bill, uh, assessment. Then I also have a donor for the furniture, household item like the fridge. They bought a new fridge for me, water filter, you know, the type that you, you, you can backwash, huh? the big stainless steel ones. I have this filter, uh, water storage tank. Huh? Yeah. So the, the um, devotees are quite very generous. Huh? They, they not only provide this thing but uh, um, I, in fact I make my own toilet I construct my own toilet so the there's one devotee who dana the water tank uh, WC uh, shower what it, hot water shower so I just have to fix it by myself huh? anyway I, I I I can do the okay. work huh? so no problem huh? okay. Okay, this, uh, this is a typical day. In the morning, uh, I will do a short morning chanting. Then after my chanting, uh, it will be winter bata time. Uh, we can only go out at the break of dawn. Uh, so when it's a little bit bright, we can, uh, we can go out. So normally I'll go out with my bowl and a big bag to, to put everything in. Uh, if you can think of the postman bag like something like that a very big bag uh, also devotee helped me to sew mm. then after coming back from Pindabad I will do my daily chores uh, there are always things to repair because uh, the, the kuti I'm staying in is actually a very old house uh, very run down house so there are a lot of repair things to do and right now they are, in fact, they are white ends uh, on a few beams. Uh. So I, some devotee, kind devotee, uh, helped me to raise some funds to repair the uh, white end infested uh, timber uh, truss. In fact, the roof truss. Uh, uh, and they are going to change the roof for me because my roof also cracked already the roof material, so they are going to change into the, um, I don't know what they call it, uh, the three layer, three layer uh, metal one, uh, in between there's foam, uh, so it's not so hot and it's not so noisy when it rains. Uh. So like I say, I do my, my own tiling, I do my electrical work also, because uh, formerly I was uh, working in, in an electrical company, uh, so I also do, did my own tiles. Uh. Of course, it's not so nice, uh, but can can use. Uh. So it's uh, very cost effective. Uh. Imagine I make my toilet uh, for less than 1,000 ringgit. Mm. And with the, um, if I ask someone to do it, it may cost me about maybe seven to 10,000. So uh, it's very cost effective. 
So after completing my chores, then I will take a quick shower. Then it will it will be my lunch puja. I I like to do lunch puja. So that will include some chanting. Then after I finish my meal, uh, we have to finish by noon lah. Our actual noon time and uh, and the clock is different lah. Uh, actual noon time every day change. It's about one. One o'clock to one thirty. It's almost a time like the Muslim ah uh, walk to door or calling for prayer. Uh, so that time we cannot eat. Uh. So for us, we are allowed to eat two meals a day: uh, breakfast and uh, lunch. So after my lunch, I will take a short rest, uh, and then the whole afternoon I spend my time on meditation. <clears throat> Whatever I do, I stop it. I just stop it. I don't bother. I I continue the next day, the next uh, the next available day. Uh, sometimes I have to go out like Saturday. I have to go to Padang Serai, a uh, place near to Luna, uh, near Kulin. And Sunday I go to Sungai Ara. Uh, so when it come to meditation, I let go of everything and concentrate on my meditation. Because uh, meditation is the most important part of our daily life. Okay, then evening I was, uh, I will begin the evening by evening chanting. Uh, this chanting is slightly longer because uh, uh, I have more time. Uh. So after chanting, I will prepare my uh, my other work, my other dharma work. Uh, because uh, every Thursday I have to give a Dhamma talk. Uh, initially, I go to Bodhi Hut Sanctuary, but now because it's MC, uh, after the because of COVID lah, so the past one year I've, I've been giving Hokkien Dhamma talk over Facebook Live uh, every Thursday morning. So I have to prepare uh, what the material for the, my talk uh, because my talk is about. Uh, the Nikaya. So I can't simply talk, I have to read the Nikaya, then I have to understand, then I'll prepare uh, a notes form for my talk. Then I also have to write articles for Metalosh Yohobaru uh, once a month. And every day I also uh, share some sutta with my friends uh, on Facebook, on uh, WhatsApp. Mm. Then if I have extra time, I'll read extra, extra, mm. uh, I'll read the Dharma. So like I say, I, I chant three times, morning chanting, um, lunch, puja, and eating chanting. Uh. So my chant, I try to follow what we chant at uh, Tao Monastery, but uh, it has uh, involved, to, involved to include other things uh, because uh, I used to receive requests from friends who are sick to chant Bojanga for them. Uh, and uh, there are quite a lot of chant to do. <laughs> so the... Our morning chanting, we also have reflection, reflection on, on the four requisites. Uh. There's a rope, that to, uh, then the shelter, there is rope, food, food, then shelter, then medicine. Uh, every day we have to uh, reflect on the thing because before we even go out for Pindapata. Okay, during my Pindapata experience, uh, during my first uh, two years, in fact, three years, four years, uh, <laughs> even four years, first two years at uh, Yangon uh, uh, and Pinulin, uh, we don't go out Pindapata. But la later, uh, later I, in Pinulin, uh, I go out Pindapata, uh, but only a short while. Because at that time, the Taino allow us to go out. Uh, so 
I I have um, exp experience Pindapata in um, Myanmar and also experience the, the living condition of the local people. In fact, some of the uh, devotees are very, very poor. Uh, their houses, um, the wall of the houses are usually uh, made of leaf, uh, leaf. Um, and some, some of the house got no door. <laughs> uh, some only a piece of plastic hanging down. Uh, but yet they are very, very devoted. They will prepare the dishes. Then when we arrive, they serve us tea. And after that, immediately they go and cook and they give us hot meal. Uh, then we bring home, we bring back to our monastery. Uh, usually I'll bring the two teething carrier, five, uh, five tier leaf, um, five tier teething carrier, and also uh, one big bag. And sometimes the people at the from the, the devotee, uh, the, the young boys, uh, they will help me to bring back. Especially when I went to the army camp, we are allowed, the army, in fact, they welcome us. Uh, we are allowed to go in. Uh, the army camp is quite nice because uh, the houses are mostly brick, all brick, and there are so shops that inside the camp. <clears throat> So initially, they don't allow us to go out because of security reason. They are scared that uh, something might happen to us and also to give us more time to focus on meditation. So the, now coming back to the, oh, before the current one, uh, uh, when I was stay in uh, Bali Pulau, uh, I start my Peter partner. Uh, we, I, I walked together with an Abante uh, for about uh, 45 minutes, three kilometer walk from a place called Sungai Pinang near uh, Bali Pulau to Pandai Aceh. Uh, to and fro six kilometer. So I sweat, really sweat a lot. Mm. Then coming back to my present place, uh, it is very convenient, just a 10 minute walk. Uh, then uh, on regular day, Monday to Thursday, I have about 20 to 30 regular devotees performing dana. And on weekdays, Saturday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, there are more people. Sometimes about 50 and on Sunday can come out to a, near to 100 devotees. During the MCO, we still go out for peanut butter. No stopping. So, but uh, of course the food is less, less people come out, but still enough to eat. And the people offer us medicine, health supplement, uh, uh, sometimes give us chia seed, uh, uh, what, uh, a lot of berries. Uh, then also non-food items like toiletry, tissue, uh, slipper, uh, detergent, etc. Uh, almost everything they give. Uh, and uh, they also give us invitation. If we need anything, just let them know. So they are very, very <laughs> um, And uh, all items are accepted. In fact, I'm a vegetarian. Uh, I like to eat vegetarian even though we, uh, it's not required to be a vegetarian. At Pa'au Monastery, it is vegetarian because uh, at our mo main monastery in Moromain, we have about 1,000 people, about 500 monks, uh, 300 sali, and 200 yogi. So if they, uh, and the food are all cooked in a monastery. So if they are going to cook, uh, let's say meat, for example, chicken, 1,000 people, you need about 100 chickens. So there'll be a lot of killing. So in our monastery, we don't cook uh, meat, don't cook seafood. But devotees are allowed to bring an offer. So for Pindapata, there are three conditions. Number one, the donor or the 
if the donor cannot come, the representative must be present to offer. And it must be offered at arm's length. And the monk must be present, no? unless uh, I'm sick. Lah. So, so far, never happened. Lah. Uh, so if I'm sick, so the kapia will help me to bring up the food no? and, and hand to me as an offering. So the, there's a kapia who helped me to bring the food up, uh, all the offerings up to my kusi. So I'll choose whatever I need. And the balance, uh, he will bring it out either to eat, but most of the thing uh, go to Ofoxom. Uh, so nothing is go to, go to waste. Uh. So the devotee are so happy, whatever I cannot finish it will go to uh, Ofoxom. There are a few categories of food. So now, Usually, the food cannot be uh, consumed uh, after noon. Uh, it cannot be kept. So, like the dishes, after noon, we have to relinquish, cannot keep. We are not allowed to keep. Uh, then, uh, certain things, for example, the five tonics, uh, that one we can keep for five days, uh, seven days. They are ghee or fresh butter. But in, in the Thai tradition, they also include cheese, uh, vegetable oil, and animal oil, honey, molasses, and sugar, including uh, candy, trackers, everything. Uh. So five tonic we can keep for seven days. So after seven days, we have to bring up, uh, have to let go. So um, we have to hand it over to a lay person. Uh. Then fruit juice without pulp or res residue uh, and non-processed, that means not cooked at all, uh, non-processed, uh, we can consume for one day. We have, that means we have to finish by before the next dawn. We count the day, uh, uh, the, the day end at the next dawn. Uh, and there are some uh, lifetime uh, Lifetime allowance, like uh, plant root, ginger, turmeric, ginseng, uh, and uh, tea leaf, uh, like neem leaf or seaweed, uh, fruits. Normally, it's a dried fruit, uh, like kana, the olive, uh, we, can, we can consume. Uh, then uh, salt, uh, the rock salt, sea salt, mineral, mineral salt, uh, vitamins, and other health supplements. Uh, as long it, as it don't contain any food, uh, we can keep for a lifetime. Um, like certain things like cod liver, cod liver oil, we can only keep for seven days uh, because it's oil. And in some tradition, they also allow some um, plain beverages, that means without milk, uh, coffee, tea, cocoa. But Milo cannot, Milo because uh, also got milk. So the intention of, of you uh, uh, to use this thing is so that you, you won't fall sick. Uh. So uh, sitting arrangement with lady. Normally we don't share table with lady person. Uh, so, the, the main reason is uh, to avoid the lady from touching our food. Uh, because uh, once you offer to us, uh, you are not supposed to touch, uh, especially the Thai tradition. But Myanmar tradition, we allow lay person to touch because we assume uh, they are trying to help us to, to bring the food nearer to us. So, uh, we normally allow, unless that lay person who are new, uh, uh, then he don't know, he want to eat. Uh. So if he want to eat, we have to let him eat because we cannot compete with lay person for the food. Uh. So no, normally, lay person don't, touch, don't eat. Uh. Once in a while, yeah, some children, 
or some who are coming for, for the first time, uh, they, they, are, they are not aware, so they, they want to try. Uh. <laughs> so once it, they want to try, we cannot eat anymore. So then certain food, we have to be make allowable. For example, some, uh, some um, uncooked food, uncooked vegetable or fruit with seed. For example, these are uh, raw onion. It can be grown. Then uh, strawberry, uh, they are seed. Uh, they are seed all around. We have to make it allowable. And passion fruit, uh, also all full of seed. How we make it allowable? Firstly, we tell the, the lay people, we say, kapiam karui. Kapiam karui means make it allowable. So the lay person will, uh, will um, symbolically destroy the the fruit or the the veggie uh, that means symbolically re removing the life from them the reason is because uh, during buddha's time uh, the external sect ascetic complained to the buddha that we destroy all this uh, this fruit and food uh. so that's why the buddha did not want to offend them and so instruct us to make to get it allowable. We make it the lay people make it allowable by inserting a tooth toothpick la or knife la or can use the fingernail also. Just poke a hole or burn it with fire a little bit. So because the, the rationale is the monk monk are not allowed to take anything with life. For example, uh, uh, egg, we cannot take raw, or half boy egg, we also cannot take. <laughs> Coming to the use of rope, each one of us are only allowed one set of rope. One set means one lower rope, one upper rope, and one outer double layer rope. Only uh, one set. So um, if, for example, one set of rope, sometimes you need to wash, right? So um, the other thing is the double layer rope we seldom wear. In the course in Malaysia, it's very hot. We only bring it about when we go about. Because the, when we go anywhere, the three set of, the full set of rope must be with us. Uh, we cannot leave it behind. So if we wash our upper rope and lower rope, we can wear the double layer rope. Mm. So normally we wash in the morning uh, so that by afternoon or evening uh, it should dry, then we can wear back again. So we, we allow only one set. But normally, in especially in Malaysia, we have a lot of rope. Uh. So other than our one set of rope, yeah, we call it extra cloth, extra cloth. So normally when we wash our rope, we wear another set of rope called extra cloth. So we can only change our official rope, uh, official rope, if there are five holes or more, and it cannot be patched up. So the purpose is uh, to be frugal, uh, don't waste anything. And the old rope, we can use it for other purpose, like as a curtain, as a tablecloth, uh, or some other food rack also. Okay, before we change our rope, before uh, taking on a new set of rope, we have to formally relinquish the old set by just reciting a verse. Then before taking the new set of rope, Number one, firstly, we have to permanently mark, mark the rope. Either we have a pen or mark the pen. The purpose is to deface the rope and make it less attractive. Then after we face it, we have to determine it. Either, either lower rope, upper rope, or outer rope. Outer, outer double layer rope. So extra set of rope. 
you see, we can uh, keep it active for a maximum of 10 days. Uh, after that, if not, we have to um, share it with another monk or give it out or we determine as extra cloth. Then the, not, normally we receive a lot of rope, especially during Katina. And sometimes, ordinary time also we receive rope, especially we go for uh, funeral chanting. Uh. Sometimes they, the, the people um, offer us rope also. So the extra rope, normally we donate to other monks in those uh, poorer countries. Like, uh, I think three or four years ago, I donated uh, when BGF uh, lead the pilgrimage to India, I donated about 40 sets of rope. Huh? Mm -hmm. And another 40 sets of rope to Myanmar when uh, Nandaka Vihara organized a, a trip to Myanmar. Mm -hmm. So the, the rope all are properly used. Huh? You can be assured. <laughs> so, as a monk, we have some duties. Uh, when we have a quorum of four monks and above, we have to recite the Patimoka or the 227 precept um, on the 15th day and on the last day of each month. It's not on the first day, it's on the last day of each month. But if we have uh, less than four monks, not enough quorum, then uh, we just uh, do a confession, a general confession, because uh, sometimes we may omit certain things. So um, we have to be clean. Uh. So the Buddha says, to be clean, you must confess. It's also a few lines to recite. Uh, then after, after co uh, confession, then we have to declare our purity. If uh, only one monk, like for me, for the first four years, I only have to um, determine that today is the Patimoka day or, or the um, 14 or the 15 day. And the confession and the declaration of priority and the Patimoka, we can do it anytime uh, before the next. Uh, the next dawn break. But of course, doing the party, if really doing the party moka, we have to do it when it's a bit bright. You know? Sometimes you want to refer to the text, but most of the time, the recitation is without referring to the text. Okay, then we also have to reflect on the 10 Dharma. Number one, there are 10. Huh? Number one, I'm now a changed person, huh? change to a different mode of life. Hmm. That means formerly I may be a um, boss, la, a GM, la, MD. La. So now I'm only a man. Huh? So you, you must uh, lower your own self. La. Then number two, my life depends on others. For all the four requisites, Everything we depend on others. Uh, we depend on, on the devotee for our rope, for our food, for our shelter, and for our medicine. So we really depend on others. Number three, I must now behave in a different manner. Uh, the Buddha is a noble person, uh, he's a uh, prince. Uh, so uh, we want us to behave properly so that people can respect us. So we cannot simply run and skip around, huh? cannot shout loudly. For example, you see a friend opposite the road, we cannot shout. Huh? We have to walk there or we ask somebody to call for us. We cannot shout. Eating, huh? we have to either uh, sit down or we squat down. We are not allowed to stand and eat. Like uh, yeah, that, um, also you cannot be seen licking ice cream, uh, licking lollipop, uh, uh, playing with handphone. Uh, so we have to behave properly. Hmm? 
Then number four, does my mind upgrade myself regarding my, the state of my virtue? That means, uh, do I break any precept? Then number five, do my discerning fellow monk having tested me, reproach me regarding my state of virtue? So whether my other senior, uh, whether uh, they, they will reproach me, if they know that I'm doing something wrong. So that's why uh, if we are doing anything wrong, we shouldn't hide. So before the Pati Moka, there is a verse saying that if you commit any wrong, please own up. Otherwise, if you keep silent, it, it is... Uh, it tends amount to telling lies. And telling lies is uh, no good for our practice. Number six, there will be a parting from all those who are dear and loving to me. Death brings this separation to me. So like you and me also the same. Huh? So everyone uh, who are dear and pleasing to us will one day leave us or we leave them. So we must be able to um, to detach, uh, detach ourselves. Then of karma, I'm constituted. Karma is my inheritance. Karma is a matrix. Karma is my kinsman. Karma is my refuge. Whatever I do, be good or bad, that I shall be. Eh. So we always have to remind ourselves that uh, our karma is very important. Mm. So our past, our present, and our future all depend on our karma. How do I spend my night and day? Uh, whether uh, we spend the time properly, uh, then do I take delight in solitude? Some monks like company, uh, some like solitude. But I like solitude, I like to be alone. Uh, I've been living alone for four years. <laughs> so to me, solitude is not a problem. Uh, have I gained superhuman facility? Faculties, have I gained that higher wisdom so that when I'm questioned on this point by my fellow monks at the last moment when death is approaching, I have no occasion to be depressed or downcast. So, if we have uh, used our time properly day and night, we should be able to make some progress. So, but whatever effort you put in, and if you can't make any progress, it doesn't matter as long as you uh, put your uh, time to good use. Mm. But of course, if you have, uh, let's say, jhana, uh, then that depends on your meditation. Then for the other thing, if you attain, let's say, the first, second, third, or fourth state of say uh, that that um, is different from meditation. That is depending on your wisdom and your uh, conduct. Okay. Um, as for me, um, every month I have to come to Taiping because there's a one temple, 100 old years temple, a Theravada temple with no monk. So I come here to help them to perform dana, Give them Dhamma talk, guide them in the meditation, and sometimes we do uh, Bodhi Puja, especially on the 15th day of every month, and every day we do lunch puja. And also there are some Bodhi society in Klang uh, that I have to last time before the MCO, I go down once every two months uh, to to attend the Dana, uh, then the give them Hokkien Dhamma talk and guided meditation session. So, uh, because there's one Buddhist society in Klang, the people helped me to renovate my kuti uh, before even I stay. Because um, last time it was really, really run down, uh, uh, not possible to stay. <laughs> so, they helped help me to renovate the place. Uh. Then, like I mentioned, on Saturday, Saturday I have to go to 
patang serai near kulim lah. There also uh, I do pindapat. Then I lead them in the puja and dharma talk and meditation. Then before the pandemic, I also go to Sangkar Lodge in Tumai Ara, Penang. Also the same thing, uh, pindapata, um, puja and dharma talk and meditation session. So if the if we can travel again, I may have to go back to the Pao Monastery in Batam. Because my teacher, twice a year, he had to go away. He had to go back to Myanmar for meeting and to lead meditation retreat. Nah? So usually twice a year. Yeah. Then uh, when he go off, he go out for one month. Nah? So I have to relieve him for one month nah? unless he can find some other monk. Uh, but usually, um, no mask there, so usually I have to go back. Then I go there, so also uh, a lot of people come to do dana. So sometimes to give them precept and transfer merits. There are also some Samanera who say there, uh, Sayale and Yogi require monks uh, guidance. Uh, and Samanera cannot live alone. And they must have a monk to guide them all the time. So that's why I had to go to Batam. So, like I say, we have to be able to practice and live alone without community of monk. And of course, we must be flexible enough which occasion arise uh, like now, another monk come back from um, Myanmar, he come and stay with me uh, because he liked my place, because he liked Pindapata and my, my schedule, I'm very free and easy. Uh, for example, lunchtime, you want to eat, what time you eat? As long as you finish by noon. Uh, so there's no fixed rule. Lah. So evening, you want to do chanting, what time you do? Uh, I do my, my own chanting, you do your own chanting. So our time uh, are very flexible. Then we take the we make sure that we take the necessary step uh, in case there are some um, condition not so um, conducive for our practice for our progress. We must uh, maybe move away uh. For example, last uh, if, when I was staying in Bali Pulau, there is a monk. Uh, who stay with me for about four months. Uh, he become um, a bit uh, different. He practice differently. He don't practice according to the Buddha teaching. He practice according to the uh, Guru teaching. So I have to move away from him. So this, this is our challenges. Uh, uh, because sometimes we find condition not so suitable for us. Uh, 